This is Cedric Maxwell here on the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. We're dealing with my main man, way back in the day, Tony Allen. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great having you on, man. We want to go through a bunch of things, but the first one we'll go through, just kind of make it easy. What are you doing right now in your life? Uh, well, right now, um, uh, I obviously am quarantining right now. I'm social distancing. Uh, beyond that, uh, I'm working with the Grizzlies. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of consulting, doing a little consulting with the, um, the Memphis Hustle. Uh, and just spending a lot of time with my kids and, you know, looking over my investments and things of that nature, playing, playing a little more, a bigger role in that. And uh, I don't know, just enjoying my kids. Just enjoying my kids. One thing that, you know, we, we I'm, I'm going to hit you with and, you know, I know it hurts you deeply. We, I've, I've heard so many times, and Kobe Bryant, when he passed away, one thing he talked about was Tony Allen. He said, Tony Allen, he asked him who the best defender ever to guard him. And he said, Tony Allen, how did that make you feel? Uh, it was flattering. Um, it, was, it was one of those situations where, um, like I tell everybody, like I was always getting gassed up to like, to go against him and, 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 and they was putting the gas in my engine and just, you know, don't go out there and, and fraternize with them and don't let them get to having a conversation with them because he might end up with 50. So it was, <laughs> my, my mindset was already on point to just defend and, and just do the best I can. And uh, just to see that I, I, I did the best that I could and he, and he praised me, man, it, it was definitely flattering. Well, I'll, I'll go even further because I love you telling me this story. One thing you talked about was the Tony Allen, or should we say the Paul Pierce boot camp. You yeah. said it was that like it that, that started you off. You said playing against Paul Pierce every day was nothing compared to going against the Kobe Bryant one time. Yeah, and prepare me for him. And you know, big as his his uh, you know, the much trash talk as he talk, he he tell me in the dope, uh, hey man, if you can stick me, you 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 can stick Kobe Bryant. We we just as good as each other. You know, that's how he felt when he was playing. Like he was, it was him and Kobe. That's what he that's man, that's Paul Pierce for you. But uh to make a long story short, I, I felt good going into those battles because of him. You know what I mean? We playing King of the Court every day, Scalabrini will tell you. Uh we going at Paul Pierce. We want to go. We want the best action. And uh, as defenders, you want that because so many prolific guys in the league, they, they got so many ways to score. Some guys get to the line. Some guys like the head fake, head fake, head fake. You know, it's just so many ways to score. So uh, I think Paul Pierce helped me with that, with his uh, with his arsenal. He got well, I, You know what? There are things that you talk about that. And, you know, go back. One thing you told me, and, I, and here's another thing. See if you remember this. I asked you a long time ago, I said, why is it when Tony Allen jumps off of his left leg, he has all the hops in the world. But if he jumps <laughs> off his right leg, he can't jump higher Brian Scalabrini. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> but, yo, uh, I'm a little imbalanced, I guess. But uh, What I can say is, uh, honestly, I, I grew up um, jumping off those jump soaps. So I don't know if any kids is listening. I actually participated in, in the jump soul movement, uh, the strength shoe movement all through high school, you know, and I and I wanted to be able to jump off both legs, but I only think those things worked on my left leg. <laughs> but uh man, uh I take pride in my my dunking, my jumping or whatnot, but uh something about my right leg, man. I just I never felt comfortable taking off that way. We asked you before, and, you know, I'm going to take you back to a moment, and we, we, I laugh about this. Tony Allen, was, it was a game against Detroit. Detroit was rolling. Some yeah. of you guys were coming into your own. They put you in the end of the game. Detroit had the ball with maybe, I think it was maybe a second and a half on the clock, and they brought you in off the bench, and you knew where the ball was going. You knew it was going to miss the big shot, was going to get the ball. Chauncey Billups, you come out to guard him. Chauncey catches it with one second. Now, that's why I said, take us through your mindset, what you had to do, because at the end of it, what Chauncey did was give you a little pump fake. But could you be right at all in that situation? No, whatsoever. It was like he was torn in between the two. Only thing I, I think that probably would have helped me in that situation was 
had I got in the game three, four minutes before that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That way I could have been loose. I could have been more like hip on the like, uh, uh understanding what, what Chauncey was looking for ahead of time with his with his footwork and uh, things of that nature. And uh, I thought, yeah, I was in a tough situation, man, a small window to go through at that time. And, and at that time, it was opportunity for playing time. It was I was getting put on a like uh, you could say like a quiz throughout the uh, regular season as far as how I play with them play, and uh, I thought that kind of that kind of uh, made Doc be like, uh, you know, <laughs> the trust factor kind of was lost after that game. But uh, hey, I actually got a chance to redeem myself later in my years and playing under under Doc. But I definitely remember that game. Vividly. I'm gonna give you names like that. Here's, I'm, I'm going to throw out names to you, and I want you to give me one word. Big Baby. My partner. My homeboy. That's my boy there, yeah, Ubuntu. You see, I got it on the wall right here. Ubuntu. <laughs> Anybody part of that right there? And he was, he was part of the young fella. So the young fella, see, so you got Tiggy, Pose, Ray Allen, uh, you know, and uh, what else? Who else they had right here? Yeah, Ray Allen and Pose and Kendrick Perkins. Them was like part of the big fella crew. You get what I'm saying? Sam for sale, those guys, right? But see, me, Big Baby Rondo, and uh, yeah, it was Perk. Yeah, Perk. Eddie House was the other big guy. But we all hung together as a core. And so anytime you hear say one of their names, I, I just think of the young fellas. And those are my boys. Those are my boys. All right, we say we'll, we'll go with. All right, let's go with Ticket KG. Oh man, the heart and soul of 2008. Paul Pierce. I have to say, a legend in my eye. Legend. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. Number, yes, two yes. Number two score in history. I can't knock that, man. And my man, and he, and, and he groomed me, Max. You saw it? You saw it? You saw it? <laughs> what the, okay. You, you used the word a minute ago in Butu. What was that? What did that mean? What that mean? That means a brotherhood, man. You know, uh, we all have to be better in order to, you know, make each other better. You get what I'm saying? A person has to say a person is a person because of other people. You get what I'm saying? So within that, we in, we we work on ourselves to be better men, better better individuals as a whole. You know, not only to 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 to, to look at one of your your brothers and, and be able to look at him and let him know where he can be more blossoming at. You know what I mean? And uh, I think in Butu, yeah. African proverb, those people came. I mean, I forgot my man name who introduced us to this word, but uh, uh, that 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 word itself is just the like. Uh, like a look, like a way of our lifestyle in 2008, man. We we needed each other through that whole run, and uh, like I say, man, I keep this picture with me because, man, that was hard work to start and finish. I mean, Max, you know, to start with a goal and execute it all the way through, and uh, with the with the with the with the way the season go with injuries and trades and things of that nature, man, I I was a part of this, man, and Ubuntu will be a part of me for a lifetime. Well, that that is so cool, man. When you say that. All right, you, you just mentioned that word in Ubuntu. So I want you to speak a little bit about Kevin Garnett's relationship with Ray Allen. You know, because you were there yeah. in Ray Allen's in that situation. Obviously, you were there beforehand. You end up leaving. But when you're talking about a great combination of guys and teammates together, how, do you, how does it splinter off like that? And do you feel like there's ever a relationship you feel like you can get that relationship back together? No, I, I mean, I, I don't really know how the relationship is, but what I can say is you're dealing with two big personalities, man. Uh, and uh, Ray Allen, he might not be the loud and obnoxious type one just all over the place like, like you know, big it is because that's what he, you know, that's he demands that, he demands that intensity. But Ray is just that, that alpha male in the more quiet way. You get what I'm saying? He demand yeah. respect. You get what I'm saying? And so it's just two tights clashing at the time when I was seeing it. But when I was around, I thought uh, those guys specifically took uh, holding each other accountable and having a level of respect for each other 
and an all-time high. I just seen all these guys, not even just Ticket and Ray. I just seen P and Ticket, and I just seen all these guys jaw jack with each other. But the ultimate thing that stood in, in line was the respect level. You get what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but for Ray Allen to just be gone and leave, and you know, I y'all heard the rumors and whatnot. For me to on the outside looking in, I just feel like you know. Ray probably felt disrespected in some type of way. Um, and like he used to throw this word around Ubuntu, you know, uh, in, in his situation, he probably didn't feel that Ubuntu part. You get what I'm saying? He didn't probably feel that love. He probably felt something different. And when, when, when situations go like that, I just believe, you know, every man is entitled to whatever he want to do. You get what I'm saying? And I understand both sides. You know, I heard both sides. You know, some guy felt he should have hollered at them before he left, but, you know, uh, we all know how tricky this business is. Uh, yeah. Upstairs management, he probably didn't see out of eye with them. And then Tarmore with the teammates just gave him enough uh, in his mindset to say, hey, I I'm just as good enough to play with some of these other talented players, which was the upcoming LeBron and Dwayne Wade guys. And I thought uh, I thought he took advantage of that and uh, took advantage of his opportunity. So I'm not mad at him. I'm pretty sure Ticket ain't mad at him. Uh, but we, we definitely need to get some type of reunion going now that you even brought this up, man, because uh, I, I, I honestly deal with both of them still to this day. You know, uh, go to Ray Allen House for his little, uh, he got this little July 4th thing he do where he just he got a big old backyard. He got, you can play the bumble bag. They playing flag football. They playing, uh, 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 they playing the throw the top. And, oh, it's all type of games he got on. He just, He's a good family man. Take it the same way, man. Bring me over, man. Hey, man, let's go work out. Let's go do. So it's all family, and I just feel like, man, it's been so long, man. I need to get a meeting with everybody, man. Now that you brought that up, you brought that up. You know, I, I, Danny Ainge has always been the kind of guy to me who is really always tried to be a perfectionist in a lot of different things. One thing he said, though, he said this to people. I made a mistake with Tony Allen. Tony Allen won it, I think, the third year or was the fourth year of $3 million, and I didn't give it to him. He said that was one of his ultimate mistakes. Yeah, and, I, and I, you know, I love Denny, man. I ain't going to let um, – it's kind of crazy because we went to Memphis. You know, Chris Wallace was over here with Danny when they drafted him. You, you remember that, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so now when, 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 when Danny drafted me, I basically, uh, you know, I, I, I was in tune with Danny. Like, I was in tune with him the whole time. Like, he would tell me, like, are you ready for these guys just coming in, whichever opponent? And he'll come give me a few, uh, a, a, a scout report on what he know about these players. And, you know, it's like as if he was slick like an assistant coach. You know, they're like, like that big brother, little brother thing. But I didn't really understand it. And it was just – nature of business, him keeping his perfection, what you just said, just having perfection. I know Tony Allen, he's scouting me already. He know I'm a good defender. And he know I'm probably one of the best defenders. So he would always come stay in my ear, and I thought that was key, man, for my career, man. And um, I'm going to always love Danny. He drafted me, gave me my opportunity. He gave me the privilege to play for the uh, the Celtics, the, the great Celtics. And um, I just believe, man, when, when I'm looking back at that, man, uh, I thought it was best for me in my career to, to do that. Although had I to stay, we probably would have got through those heat. We really got through those heat because that, like when I left, I didn't see the Celtics get through those guys, and uh, they they became a big conglomerate. That, that's a, such a fascinating story about the business. And the thing you said to me is is what ultimately I've said to different people. I said even when Ray Allen's situation, it seemed like the Celtics looked like they were going in another direction. You know, Ray Allen was there. It was kind of going back and forth. And then they go out and, and, and they sign different people, uh, Jason Terry. So Ray Allen looked at it as a business decision and said, well, you know what? I want to go someplace else because I don't feel like I'm in the lineup. It was starting Avery Bradley. So for him to make that business decision, that to me was, at the end of the day, that was his choice. And I didn't understand why. Maybe Ticket was mad and Ticket said I didn't want his number or Paul got mad because you know as a as a player, you have to make a decision on your own based on your family, who you are, and and 
and, and your responsibilities. Right, right, right. And, and, and with that being said, um, he did that, and he won two championships. So I'm not mad at him. I'm actually want. I actually want to see those rings and see how, <laughs> and see how, how many more diamonds they do put in them because they got creative as the years went on. Man, I'm looking at. I looked saw the uh, Golden State Warriors rings, and I looked at them. I said, "Wow!" <laughs> I put my head down, but I say, "You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna love my 2008. Like like it ain't like it ain't going nowhere. It's, it's in my room. Hey." No touching, leave it in the, in the cake. Tony, isn't it funny, though, when you go to a place like Memphis and you're a great defender, and I've heard from different different uh, people about you in Memphis and just the role that you started to take. And and Daryl, I have a friend named Daryl who is there, and he's always talks about Tony. He said, man, Tony Allen that came down here, and he's taken over the city in a whole nother way of being – an ambassador. One thing I remember, somebody said you were a poster for the Memphis Grizzlies uh, yeah. as an ambassador to the city. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. At one point, uh, I mean, oh man, I got so much love down here. I love the city, man. I don't, I don't see myself going nowhere. Um, uh, me, it all start back. My whole thing was Memphis was just giving them a hundred and ten percent. Obviously, I knew what it felt like getting to the finals, like playing. Some Playing spot minutes, training hard from injury, getting my injury. Like, I've, I've been at so many levels of my career, down, up, down, up. When I got to Memphis and I look at Ticket, when he came in, it was like, I, I really didn't see why he was so focused and, and just. <laughs> but I did that. That's a perfect. That is a perfect example of how Ticket was just growling and foaming out the mouth. And that was his preparation, his meditation to to go seek and destroy on his his opponent. And uh, I didn't know what he was getting ready for. Pretty loose, saying, "What's up?" So I'm looking down on the other end. What's up, baby? Yeah, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm just too loose. I'm just showing fraternizing a little too much. I think Ticket told me to pipe down on that phone we need to focus on and let's get up out of here. We'll talk to them after the game, man. Ain't no friends in between these lines. We're trying to get it. And but, the way he went about doing it, I kind of took that with me when I went to Memphis. Rondo, you got a great court vision, man. And he's shooting that ball way better than Rondo. You know what I'm saying? I told you guys this. And Rudy, I just said, man, you just as athletic. I mean, you way athletic as P and you, and you you're scoring like – 20 guys say, we there. I'm just going to be the guy. I promise you, I promise you, I said this. I, I told Rudy Gay, the commercial, I say, I'm going to be the guy that's be ready to stick Kobe and them down the stretch, all them big guys. That's going to be me. I'm a, I want all that smoke. You know what I mean? I'm talking about that. The, them the first words come out of my, my mouth. Soon I leave. But the third year, I say, man, we, we going to make some noise this year. And I said that before anything. They had us look, winning 35 games that year. <laughs> they had us... You get what I'm saying? They had us doing everything on the mediocre side. And that was just more fuel to the fire coming from Boston, getting all the way to Memphis. I had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to get my name out of the limelight of Paul Pierce and all those guys. I just that. Tell me a little bit more about that picture that's behind you. That picture is unbelievable. With them troops, them, they are, you know, guys don't look like basketball players. You look like soldiers back then. Yeah, most definitely. And we had that mentality of soldiers, man. Um, I can remember vividly the training camp day. Uh, I was just recovering from my ACL injury. I was in, I was already cleared to play. I was ready to attack the season. I knew about the big uh, additions with Tiggett and Ray. Uh, I've been a fan of those guys all through my career. Uh, and then to, for those guys to get there and sit down and just, just come together, each guy is averaging 20-something a game. I'm like, where is this ball going to get past that? <laughs> you know, I'm excited just to be a part of the Beatles. I'm like, yo, this is it. <laughs> and um, those guys just came together, man. I just saw them sit down in the hotel uh, lobby. They sat down. They all made it to Rome. I just saw them sit down. They, Doc pretty much had to start a fire ready. So they all just sat down, and we looking, we walking past looking at them guys just chopping up. Then all of a sudden, man, the next day they come and practice – them brothers ain't got no hair on their head. They didn't shave their whole head. Paul Pierce got a bald head. I'm like, is you all right, brother? 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at the reality. He already bought, so it made sense. Ticket already bought, it made sense. Then you see Ron doing perk. I'm like, oh no, I hope this ain't part of the demo. Was that on the Was that on the brochure before we got the room? Hey, I was like, no, I'm not going. But we had so many, so much fun. We went to a lot of uh, places where you know history was made and things like that. Uh, we went to the Vatican. Uh, these the stairs or somewhere I forget. I'm getting you saying nothing wrong, but uh, we we took a big picture right here, man. And that picture gonna be with me forever because those guys from start to finish, like I say, to win a championship all the way to the championship sub, start to finish from uh, training camp to the championship sub. I don't think that's that's not easy to do because I've been in ten and lost, did it the same way. So hey, I don't take this one. And uh, I can't. I gotta put this one right here behind me at all costs. Yep, that's that picture right there. I'm gonna throw another name out you and a couple of this, this name association thing again. I'm gonna say Rajon Rondo, the Wizard, the Wizard, and I'm gonna say he the Wizard because you know I'm gonna go back. Let me go back because I, I saw Rondo when we was in the loop. We lost like 1918 in a row. Um, in Boston. I was with Rondo around that time. And before he started the plan, he would always sit back and say, bro, I'm supposed to be out there. Like, he would be 38 steaming hot. I'm supposed to be out there. You know who they were playing in front of him? Sebastian Telfair. That, that, oh, that, but, but listen, he scouted the game so well sitting on the sideline. It's like when you put him in, the moment he got his opportunity, he knew everything what not to do. Okay, all, all the guards uh, that's in here, they want to come in here and pull up off the pick and roll. Okay, I'm going I'm to show him that it's real easy. I'm going to get everybody involved. And I'm talking about he took that to a, his with his IQ, knowing the game, he took that on how to – get everybody involved and make it look like it was a playground show. It was him, him just playing with little kids or something, man. I'm talking the wizard. He knew stuff before Doc could even see it. I guarantee right. you. Know, I'm going to give you another one. Kendrick Perkins. That's our muscle. That's our bruiser. The bruiser. I got to give him the bruiser. You don't want to get a pick back for Kendrick Perkins. I'm talking about as soon as Kevin Garnett came over there with Kendrick Perkins, he turned into a whole nother monster. I'm talking about you didn't want to jaw jack with him. You didn't want to jack with him. You didn't want no smoke with Kendrick Perkins once Ticket came. Because he knew he had a, a big fella like Ticket. Tell him, go ahead, be you. Be be a monster. Be be ferocious. And that was the battery in his back. And he carried that all the way to, the, to his end of his career. You should have seen him in Oklahoma City when I got with him. He wanted to beat up my boy Zebo. He wanted to fight my boy Zebo. I say, come on, Perk, what you doing, man? So that's just always been him. So I'm always call him the muscle. One thing I, I, I talk about, you talk about the muscle perk, and I remember uh story, I remember seeing this, and it was so funny to me. It was uh Leon Poe. Leon Poe and Perk were in a practice one day. It was before everything had got started. Oh, yeah, I remember. You can hear Perk over there talking about, he said, Leon. I'm going to kick your ass. And all I remember saying, Leon, go, I ain't going no place. I'm going to be right here. <laughs> I'll be right here. <laughs> and like, Leon Poe didn't give a damn what. And he was such a valuable weapon, man, that people didn't realize how good. I mean, you guys just had so many players. But talk about a little about, about Leon Poe. Oh, Leon Poe, uh, I, I want to say this. I want to say this. If we didn't have Leon Poe in 2008, I don't think we would have won. He came in and made some big baskets, play after play, and one after and one, put back after put back, just being in all the right places at all the right times. And, and Doc used him, and whenever he had his number called, he executed it. And I, and I, and I really got a huge respect for Leon, man. And, um, yeah, that's my boy, too. I forgot all about Leon, man. Real, real Much love for Leon. I, I look at your team and I look at you now and watch you during those early years and watch you grow from this Chicago kid hanging out with Antoine to a real pro professional basketball player. It's like not, not you didn't never know how to play, but you turned into something. I was watching you 
from the time you got here until the time you left, it was a different player, a different person, a different man. I would agree. Uh, simply because of life hitting me. Uh, obviously, I told you I was hurt. I didn't want to leave Boston. My wife is from Boston. Um, I'm still with her today. But uh, what I can say is, man, uh, it just it just opened my eyes up. Like, I look back, like Real Talk uh, said, I, I just look at all of the, the opportunities that I just failed on off the court and and being successful as far as like taking care of my body, eating the right things, getting the proper rest. You know, I didn't take advantage of that early on. And so when it got to the point where like, I, Danny Ainge don't want to give me this third year, I looked back and said, you know what? Had I not been doing all that stuff that didn't help me or help my body or help me become a better player, was that, was my past coming back to haunt me? All that did was focus me in. I realized, like, yo, it's really not a right to be in the NBA. It's a privilege. And when you got a privilege, you should take advantage of that. So when I left, I was hurt. I was salty. Uh, Made things even worse. I I thought I was going back home to sign with the Bulls. I didn't sign with the Bulls. They took the deal off the table and gave it to uh, Ronnie Brewer. And uh, that was more. That must have pissed you off. That was more insult to injury. And then I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, what am I going to do? And then I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. All I remember is Chris Wallace calling me. And, uh, I mean, Coach Sip calling me because I guess he 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 know uh, Chris Wallace. And he was like, man, would you play for the Grizz? Man, I, I, told him I ain't had nowhere to go. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> 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 so, I said, yeah, yeah. so now Danny Ainge and them at the time, they buzzed with We only got two years for you. Ah, we love you. Ah, we love you. But ah, I called Paul. I say, Paul, man, you know, I don't want to go, man. But he was like, man, this, that's what he told me. That's the business of it, man. You know, you got to always be ready, man, and, you know, make a next step and put, start a new chapter in this business, man, because you never know how long you're going to be there. And that was the ultimate goal right there. So I was like, you know what? I, when I get to Memphis, I ain't getting in no trouble. When I get to Memphis, I'm eating right. I'm taking care of my body. I'm staying close to my family. And I'm using all those little uh, routines to get ready and prepare to be great, like Ticket, Ray, and Paul. Like, And I really took that. And uh, Marcus Saul used to get on me all the time, like, oh, snap. They go to the boy acting like Ticket. He acting like Paul. Oh, man. So, but it, it wasn't embarrassing to me because I know they they great. You get what I'm saying? And I don't want to be good. Ticket used to always ask me, do you want to be good or great? I want to be great. He said, that's what I need to hear then. So I was all, like, they was, it was like a boot camp, really, like preparing me for, I right, go out on your own and do your thing. And I and I thank those guys for that, man. And I really, really do, man, because my, my career was like a roller coaster over there in Boston and, and I had opportunity, but I wasn't wise and mature enough to understand what it be a, to me, to, what it means to be a pro's pro. And I think being around those guys, man, helped me be a pro's pro, man. And if they ever hit this platform, man, uh, I, like I just really appreciate them, man, for real. They helped me a lot, man. But you know, you you talk about the ticket, and you talk about Kevin Garnett. He must have been like the ultimate psychologist because every time I hear, I remember him barking. I, there was a story that happened on the plane, and I love this. It was it was Big Baby was having an argument on the plane, and it might have been. It wasn't with you. It might have yeah, been with me. You. It was with me. Yeah, and, and, and and Big Baby starts screaming and yelling and and, and yeah, and Ticket grabbed him. You like Tony Allen was like, whatever you want to do. And then Ticket grabbed Big Baby, sat him over there in the damn corner and said, and start talking to him. And I remember this just like yesterday. And the best thing I remember about this, not only did Ticket talk talk Big Baby down, but what he did, he went and apologized. Ticket po- apologized to everybody on the plane. He said, this is for family. I said, this is what yeah, happens. I remember that. Yeah, that's what you did. You did that. And, and there was such an a, a unbelievable story that nobody knew that you that happened with you and Big Baby arguing over. I'm not $5 or $10. I am not even know what y'all were arguing about. And but it was crazy. I, and that's the thing. I'm going to keep that's confidential. That's my man, Honey Grant. I told him to this day, I say, man, I ain't going to say nothing, man. That's <laughs> between me and him. <laughs> a real funny. You know, one of them locker room jokes. 
You know what I'm saying? It ain't. It's just a locker room joke. But I want Big Baby to tell the story. I want him to let the world know the story before I tell it. I tell his day. I ain't never told nobody. But he did run that. He was ready to tear my head off because you know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a funny person, Max. You've been around. I'm a hee hee ha ha person. I could jaw jack with you all day. We could we could rank on the chat all day. But it was one of these days, you know. He just couldn't stomach. So <laughs> we, we talked. Well, you know what? You know what? I know you're not gonna tell the story. But what I remember about the story was you were saying, "Dude, you need to go get some deodorant." And that's what I remember. And I think that was the story. You just, you went on the and he couldn't take that particular thing. You're like, you oh, went oh. off. You got me laughing. Right? Hey, bring me some water. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got me sweating, Max. You got me sweating, Max. I can't say the story. I'm not telling the story. That might okay, be we want to. Hey, baby, young, young guy, okay, we're, we're not going to tell the story. Now, I, I want you to get back a little bit about the Mbunte and, you know, of, of what, you know, you're talking about that as a brotherhood. And, you know, we need to know when you're talking about brothers, and I watched the way you guys played during that year. And let's go even further. Let's talk about how you played the next year when you talked about you guys were, when you were there 23 and 25 and 3. And you guys were on the roll until Ticket got hurt. Man, why you just, man, I, uh, oh. Well, obviously, we, we turned into a makeshift team without him. Uh, couldn't one guy do everything that Ticket do? So, you know, we got to do it by committee. And uh, I thought, I thought that year, Ticket wanted to play more than anybody. Mm -hmm. Being hurt. I was watching him in the training room. I was saw him, I saw him going through all his little preparation to, to get better for you know just the rehabilitation, not his strength and conditioning, just his rehabilitation from his injury. And uh, I saw some days him crying and just fight through pain and just like that. Like that's when I knew like all that that ah screaming and it was all part of his mental stage and just fight through it and just fight through it and fight through it, not giving up. And uh, I just remember one day on the, on the, on the plane when he, he, he down there cried. Well, he was, tears was coming out of that. Like he was telling us like, man, I'm gonna shut it down. They making me shut it down. I don't want to shut it down. And uh, that's when I just like, he, Ubuntu, we talk about the word Ubuntu. And then when you see one of your brothers hurt, I mean, that's just an opportunity there for you to uplift them. Like at the time, we couldn't really uplift them. We ain't no 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 positions or nothing. But I right, let's be strong for Ke uh, for uh, Kevin. Let's 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 let's, let's put in a little more uh, extra work on our own time to try to build up for Kevin. And because uh, that's what he would want us to do. That's what he would be doing if if he wasn't um, hurt. So uh, that year was tough for us. Uh, we arguably felt like had he not. Got hurt that year, maybe back to back. Uh, man, yeah, was, I, I think you guys are going to win seventy games that year. Yeah, I, most I think we're on the roll like that, man. It, I was watching. It was like it was like watching a damn machine. I mean, because you guys were running through people like like some. You know, it was like you turn it on and it, it was people just disappear. People were beat before they even played you. You guys, your reputation preceded you, and that to me was amazing to see. Man, a lot of lot of lot of personalities, man. I, I, now that you're thinking about, I'm thinking about that year. Eddie House, uh, man, Eddie House. Who else we had? Guys like uh, who was it? Uh, we had Stephon Marbury come that year. Uh, who else we had? It was a lot of people. 2009, 2008, 2009 season. That was the year Kevin got hurt. But I'm trying to figure out. Who else we had throughout the season? We're, we're, obviously, we know our core. But did we make any trades that year? I or, don't remember any trades. I just remember the team. We lost Posey. We lost Posey. You know, saying, like, just, just, in, just as, as in the role, the guy that, you know, you seem like it was uh, P.J. Brown was the guy. That, uh, yeah, P.J. Brown was the guy who came in. And, remember him coming in and, Adopting sort of the same thing that Kevin and Paul. It's like you got they 
they morphed in. Seemed like players morphed into who they were. They they built themselves around Paul and Kevin and Ray. The big three that was real, wasn't it? When you talk about those big three, yeah, it was it was very real. Uh, you being around guys who obviously gonna make who make you better at all costs. You figure uh, I I can bring up so many scenarios how these guys make you better. Uh, I used to remember just because I used to come off the bench and a lot of times I would just I knew I wasn't going to get any plays called for me. So whenever Ticket would have the ball in the post and raise on the opposite side of the wing and I'm in the corner, I would always come set a flare screen to put the defense in indecisive moments so it could open up my cut. You get what I'm saying? That's two point. Uh, I'll wait till Paul make his move and, and dribble and dribble and dribble until somebody come travel and then I cut. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was a cutting machine. And these guys, no matter which ones you played with, you was it was almost like evident you was going to get a bucket. And they made you better. So uh, just being around them, man, it, it, it was obviously off the court. It was like the Beatles everywhere we go. It's 30, 40, 50 fans outside our hotel, three in the morning. So that you, you got a chance to see what that was like, and uh, ultimately they were some stand up guys, man, and uh, they, they they showed us how to be pros, man, real pros, and I really appreciate well, that. The crazy important about that to me, Tony, is like where you were before of just being, and you said winning so many games, being out the playoffs, and then all of a sudden becoming the world beater. How you guys had to go through Detroit to be much better. That was the big thing. Everybody said, oh, Detroit, no way you beat Chauncey Billups. No way you beat Rip Hamilton. No way you beat these guys. And, and then you matched up. And I just remember that you guys were just that much better. I remember, you You remember this play. Uh, uh, Lindsey Hunter was coming down in a three-on-one three on, three on one fast break. And Ticket came down and rolls up on Lindsey Hunter like I've never seen anybody get dunked on. And Lindsey Hunter laid on time. I was gonna foul him. I was like, "Where are we <laughs> going? Tie his shoe." His <laughs> ticket was like, no oh, he got one. He was in the air. <laughs> but no way, him. I remember that. I remember that play. But uh, no, man. Um, ticket and, he, and 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 Ray and being around those guys, man. It was all us just understanding that those are our head honchos. We need to follow in line and uh. We, brought, we, we, everybody has to have both feet in. That was Doc's biggest thing. Like, everybody got to have both feet in, you know what I'm saying, to the circle and following and follow in line with this word of Ubuntu. And I thought Ticket Ray and Paul had their own way of just letting it be known that they need the others. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't, like, it was, it could have been easy for them to ego trip on us and be like, y'all over there. And this, but no, they embraced us. You got, you got guys like Ticket, uh, uh, he had round up all the young fellas. You know, I'm going to need y'all. So, you know, just to let you know I need y'all, man, I want y'all to be together at all costs. And, and you know, he took all the young fellas and bought them uh, a luggage, Louis Vuitton luggage, toiletries, uh, you know, little man bags and purse. You know, he took, he looked out for them. And, uh, you know, you know that just that just lets you know that you, that's Ticket. But Ticket need me. Ticket, Ticket going to count on me one day. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be able to come through for Ticket one day. I'm going to work harder for Ticket. He don't know that. That instilled a lot into the young fellas, man. And you just get love. Like, so when that word come up, man, it's like, it's, it was actually inactive. It was active. You know what I mean? so it, it was actually active while we were playing. So, and it's still active today, man. I call those guys, hey, don't need nothing. But, hey, in any event, I'm pretty sure that word still sticks. You know what I'm saying? Well, that is why I'll ask you if that word sticks today, and I truly believe it does, why hasn't Ticket and Ray Allen been together? Because this is, these, and I understand you talk about their egos, but you're talking about two of the greatest players maybe to ever play that position and win a championship together. How, are, they too, are they too much like bulls just butting together? How do you, you, you formulate one of those things like, dude, it's okay. Let's just, you know, squash out. Let me do it like this, like we normally say. Let me squash all that shit, okay? Right, Let, let's, right, let's, right. Let's, let's, let's get back together as men because life is too short with this coronavirus. It's like, yeah. damn, let's, let's let's be men. Right, you would think that would happen, man, but you know, I ain't gonna lie, man. NBA players, man, what I learned about NBA players, man, when we get in our mode, man, we get on what we on, we on what we on, man. 
we'll we, we, we say it's cool. We'll say it's cool, uh, Max, but man, deep down inside, it's like, man, you did something foul, man. And that's just how you feel. Whether you, the way you feel is the right way to feel in that situation, it could be right or wrong, but how you feel personally, you gonna always say second matter like no, I ain't tripping. It's cool, but it really not cool. You get what I'm saying? So until they just say, man, you know what? I'm really on that. I'm on that, bro. Let's let's meet up. Let me holler at you. Let's go somewhere. Cause they, I'm pretty sure they both know what each other love to do. They both know that the ins and outs of each other. They know. I I, I know I know, bro. Like golf, they don't take ticket nothing. Be like, let me go on here, put on some golf clothes. <laughs> Look, kill it for the media. Look, kill it for the media and tell him and and and, and, and ticket. I hope you hear it. Do him like how you did me that day when you told me to take off them damn head, them beast headphones. They too loud while you get ready for the game. <laughs> and, and that's Tick. all it is. That's yeah, all Tick. it is. And nigga, yeah, you're you know right. What you're but right. I, but who am I to say what his reason for for being that way? And who's the, am I to say Ray? Like I don't. I'm not into that. But what I know, what I know is my time together with them, they taught me so much and I appreciate them, but I know for a fact that they minds are so strong that man, they ain't really tripping on nothing. Y'all just y'all just being petty, y'all ego tripping to me, because y'all brothers. Y'all brothers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we all got family members that we don't talk to, that we probably ain't heard from in a while. But guess what? Soon as something happened to them, who be the first one? On the first red act going wherever they gotta go and ready to hurt some or whatever they gotta do. Or however they you see what I'm saying? Cause I know it's love, it's just it ain't been displayed in the in the public eye. You get what I'm saying? They and them boys cool. I know they cool. Yeah, they won a championship together. I know they cool. You get what I'm saying? So hey man. I, I you know what I, I I do I do hope it happens like that. And like you said, ticket was the ultimate teaser i came up there with like some brown uggs on one time he said man pull them damn uggs off man them for women he always been in his fashion he always been a fashion guru you know what i mean so i, I can see ticket telling you that straight he like the fashion police so i can see that happen yeah uh you know i'm gonna ask you a little bit more about kobe bryant where were you when you heard the news that Kobe Bryant had passed? Because we all kind of know where we were at and what we were doing. Yeah, I was at uh, I was at South Main Sushi here in Memphis at a, a sushi bar, and uh, I just remember my homeboy Danny. Uh, he's an indie film actor, uh, one of my good friends. Man, he's trying to make it in the uh, acting world, but uh, he called me crying. And here's a guy, man, that's that's a that's an all the way Kobe Bryant fan. Like, he loved Kobe Bryant. You know what I mean? Got all his jerseys. Well, not all his jerseys, but you know he got a jersey of his. You know, he got he got just got all his to let you know he Kobe Bryant all the way. And uh, he called me crying on the phone, like he was crying. And I didn't. And I and as I was looking at him, like, yo, I wasn't ready for that itself. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, why are you calling me crying? And uh. I went on to proceed to ask him what he talking about. And he was like, you didn't hear? He was like, man, Kobe gone. Him and his daughter. I'm like, what? So now he crying real tears. And I don't know because he's an actor. It's like, I don't know if he's serious. I don't know. So I'm looking on ESPN. And if you, if you was watching at the time, it didn't just come right on the way on ESPN. I'm turning to ESPN, CNN, TNT. It didn't just come on right away. And uh, I was like, man, I think that's that's false. That's cap. So then the lady, I remember vividly, the lady saying, yo, no, that's, you are right. That's, that is just happened. She pointed to me. And then she, we both just looked at each other, hugged each other. And I was like, well, let me take a shot. I took a shot of something. And I was like, what it was? Uh, I took a shot of Nejo. And I said, <laughs> I said, wow, I took a double shot. I just, I just got true. But I, I, I was like, wow. It just was, it wasn't like hit, like it hit me like, like man, like I vision Kobe doing everything Mike doing. Like that was my Michael Jordan. I mean, the way all that film I watched on him, all that, 
I'm like, he got to be the, the Jordan that they was talking about in the last era. Like, if it ain't, this ain't, this is the closest thing to it. I just saw this man found me out in eight minutes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you one of the best defenders around. He found you out in eight minutes, man. And that's what I'm saying. So I got to give him that praise, man. It's like, nobody ever done me like that. So it's like, and then all the stuff he was doing from 24 to 8 to Mamba to, you get what I'm saying? The black, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, it was tough, man. I, I, I didn't know what to say, man, because obviously, he's, you know, he said what he said about me, and I felt robbed of an opportunity to, you know, to even, you know, just get up with him and say, yeah, we got you in 08, man. He'd come back, and yeah, we got you in 10. And, you know, he said I was the best defender. Uh, I mean, I even had business, man, business conversations that I wanted to talk to him about as far as uh, making the Defensive Skills Academy account and merge it with him and try to, you know, pick his brain on that and try to follow that avenue uh, and just ask him, which Tony Allen was you talking about? You know, I played for Boston. I played for Memphis. You know, I know in, in Boston, the whole – my, the whole coaching staff and my teammate told me I need to be ready for you. Don't be talking to you and just just get ready to just play. And you know what I mean. And I want to share some of those stories. Uh, I want I want to ask him, um, like why did he think he was fooling me every time they run the triangle and I get the overplan on any part of the triangle that he's in? And he's and as soon as he look at Paul Gasol, he get to talking in Spanish. Like I don't know who got the back though. I know you back to back though. <laughs> hey, he holding me up, talking about some. Hey, then, he, hey, then look, hey, he run up and then back door me. I'm on that man. You beat me with that too many times. You see what I'm saying? So, so this man, it was a lot I experienced with him, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm not finna front and act like we was just boys. And, you know that ain't me, man. I ain't no clutch. I ain't no like he was really opponents. You get what I'm saying? And I think that's what he respected about me. I wasn't really trying to, like, be the, the buddy-buddy guy. It was, like, just all competition. And what Kobe loved? Competition. He loved competing at an all-time high level. And I do, too. Because that's my model. Crit and grind. Nothing given to me. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to go fight to get it. And I just believe, man, Kobe left some on the table for me, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Like an opportunity lost for myself, definitely a tragedy. Man, I feel for his family, I feel for his wife, his kids, you know, mom, his dad, everybody just involved with the Brian family, man. I just, like I say, even now, I just send my heart to him, man, because it was a tough situation. Well, you know, you transition a little bit. So you talk about your grit and grind. Why is it players are so different now? Why is everybody so buddy buddy? I mean that that's what I don't understand now about the NBA. Ain't nobody gonna fight. Ain't nobody throwing no punches. Ain't nobody you know hard fight. It the game is transitioned to a softer game now. Is it, it? Do you see it as well as I see it? Yeah, I see it. Um, I really don't understand it, but uh. You talking about forming like big threes and things of that nature. At one point before the big threes, you know, you had guys just standing on their own dominance and trying to carry the wave as they own. I like Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying, at the time. Uh, and he made it look good where he could get a lot of great role players. And I'm the star and I'm going to take a step. So you look at that being the blueprint and then the game changed. You get what I'm saying? The game changing, and it's like, okay, how are we gonna get consecutive rings, or how are we gonna put ourselves in a position to just go straight for the title? I thought the Celtics did that, and not only that, the wave got even crazy. It got even crazier. Kevin Durant going to the Warriors, and I think I want to just like it ain't like I'm bashing him, or I'm blaming it on him, but I thought that opened up the way to where, well, not actually LeBron did it first, and then KD. And I thought that was pretty much the wave and all the young fellas looking like, oh, Brian and Wade and, and those boys cool like that and hang out. They got the Banana Boat Club and 
You know, it, it's like all the young players that's up and coming to be the all stars and the pros. They like, are we gonna do what Brian and, and Ticket and all them boys did at that time? And then that's how we gonna do it. So it's just the foundation laid early on, and that that's why you see it early in, in these guys' career. Like, look at Towns and uh, the Russell kid. Yeah. So. Well, here, here's, here's the thing I'll ask you, and I, I don't think you played against them or or you might not have. I mean, I'm going to ask you about opponents that you played well against. Uh, let's say uh, Westbrook, you and Westbrook going at each other. Me and Westbrook going at each other. He know me. I know him. Uh, I know what I like about Westbrook. I love his old man. I know his father. Um and I know I know his upbringing pretty much. You know what I mean? And uh I'm I feel like Russell cut from the same cloth I'm cut from. You know, like Russell could have came in the league in 2004 and been played in that era. You get what I'm saying? He I think Russell a little too uh, he a little too monstrous for this era. He, he's kicking. He, he's kicking. That's who he is. Yeah. He's a little ticket. That's yeah. who he is. A little ticket. That's a great example. So anytime, like when I was when I was in Memphis, I used to play with him. I used to always let him know it's static. Cause I don't want him talking to none of my players like as if, you know what I'm saying? And when you go to a if, if anybody knows this, if you go anywhere but you in a, 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 a environment that you might not win, you might need to go hit the toughest person first just so they won't say you got your, your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that was my whole that was my whole mindset when I went to Oklahoma City Thunder. I always felt like this dude right here, they hard and soul. This dude right here, they muscle. He, he'll send it up and go crazy. And, and he, this is the kind of guy right here, you gotta kind of mentally like get on his mind, right? You know what I mean? And I always thought Kevin watched the film and get through that. I like Russell Ray You know what I mean? Well, I'll, I'll ask you about the league now. And did you see it going where it was going? And I'm thinking about financially. Did you ever think that Michael Conley Jr. would have been the highest paid player in the NBA? No, I didn't see it coming. Um, but uh, I heard about, you know, the TV deal and things of that nature. And uh, I saw how lucrative it was for uh, players' contracts at the time. So uh, him doing that, Right in my eye was, was 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 big. I was definitely happy for him. But uh I saw after that, I saw I was just looking around the league like, yeah, everybody finna be asking for 500 million. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I came in the league five years too early. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I think, I think we all I think we all thought that way. I remember me saying, damn, if I've been playing now. I've been a 20 million plus yeah, year. Yeah, I think about the numbers, yeah. It's crazy when you think about the numbers. And you think about how Danny didn't want to give you another 3 million. He's got to throw in 3 million out like he's doing us now. 50 million, all them boys over there, man. I, I say, hey, you can't hate the, you can't hate the uh, player. You just got to hate the game. Yeah, that is real. I love it. I love it. I'm not hating it. I love it. I'm gonna find, you know, this this last part here, and this is be me and you, like you know, we boys. You and I, and Paul, and Perk, and whoever it is, we got to talk the ticket and bring this thing back together. Because I look at you as you're my family, champions. You're my family. I will never forget you. You're my family. Is there any way that we can get together and, you know, as we say, chop it up? and find a way to bring them two boys back together. Because I don't want to see family apart like that. Man, me neither, man. I ain't going to lie. I enjoy my time around all of them guys, man. Just just watching them as a young player, a rising young player. Like, I just I just think they, 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 they too equipped for all this, man. And their characters don't even fit it. it like, it looked it look like something that's messy. Uh, and then you look at all these other championship teams that come back, reunite, and things of that nature. We ain't saying they but best of buzz or nothing like that, or they or they every day, every day on the phone. But I mean, to the public eye, the public I really want to see y'all together. You know what I'm saying? Really want to see y'all just in a picture together. If anything, not you get what I'm saying? And that's just to kill all the noise for people like us to just stop even talking about it. You get what I'm saying? 
Like, man, I'm, I can't wait for one of them boys to go and have a dinner, man. And it's going to crack, man. And if we ever have, have a reunion, I had heard one point they were talking about having a reunion. They had called me on this at one time. But I just think we need to do that, make that happen. Somebody set that up. We do that. Nip it in the bud, man. Because, man, that was, I, look, I look at my 2008 DVD, DVD every, the end of every month. I watch that whole DVD start to finish. It like it like at the end of every month. Just watch I'll this ask week. you. I'll ask you this last question. This is the last question. You know, you and I, you know, old school type people. I want to know what's on your playlist, like as music music is concerned. <laughs> I, I know how is. I'm, I'm real old school. Yeah, really. You tell me your music list. Uh, and I listen. I, I was going to go songs, but I said songs will be here all day. I probably need a top 50. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. said top five. So I'm going to give you my top five albums. Okay. That, that, that I'm talking about that I will literally go to the store and buy if they had a cassette still. You know what I'm saying? And he's laying around somewhere. But uh, let's start off with uh, Biggie Smalls, the Life After Death album. Yeah. That's, two. that's, number, that's starting at number one. No, actually, I'm going to go fat to number one. I, I, well, we can go, we go the other way around. Okay. <laughs> Let's say fat is 50 Cent, Get Rich at That Trying. Classic album sold over uh, 20 million uh, sold till today. You get what I'm saying? Or I probably yeah. might be shorting them, but that's a great album. Going number four, I'm going to go Jay-Z, The Blueprint album. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that. That album. That's yeah, I remember that. I remember that. That's the album that. Yeah, Hola, Obito. <laughs> Hola, Obito. You know what I mean? And all these could be, I ain't gonna lie, all these could be number ones. I'm just I'm just giving them to you in this book. Uh, then after that, I'm gonna go DMX album. What? Uh, 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 <laughs> you know all that. And then the last but not least, we're gonna say the. Um, we already said Big Small, so let's just say the American. Did I say the American most wanted? The Tupac and Snoop. Yo, okay, okay. Bingo. No, you didn't say Bingo. This one and two. Now, if I can have all five of those albums, Fifty Cent gets Richard Die Trying, American Most Wanted, Tupac and Snoop, DMX album, Rough Riders, Jay Z Blueprint, and Biggie Small's Life After Death. You can ride with me. We can ride from Memphis, Tennessee, all the way to Boston, Massachusetts. Listen to that song. You know what? I, I love that because I, I love it because they used to tease me, me being older now. I used to wear like a Tupac shirt on the on the plane. And man, they would clown me like, what you know about them? Tupac. I was like, picture me rolling. And they would just get on, get on my behind. But those are the kind of albums I think for me. And then I'm old school going back with your mom and dad, you know, I'm Marvin Gaye going back that way. Okay. But that that's where I think I meet with you, with the whole thing about Tupac. Yeah, man, Tupac, he definitely was an inspiration, man, uh, with his music. Uh, we all know the favorite song, Dear Mama. Uh, every time my mama hear that song, she cry. Uh, every time I hear when I'm riding, I'm, 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 I get to thinking about so many times that I, I actually came through for mom Dukes and, and, and it put a smile on my face. So, um, yeah, we, we, we can both agree to uh, Tupac, man. Definitely. Well, man, you know what? It was absolutely a pleasure having you on Cedric Maxwell Podcast with my man T.A. He's been doing it for chopping it for years, brother. You know, I got nothing but love for you. And I want to see me, you, Ray, Ticket, Kevin. I want to see us all at Kevin Garnett's retirement when they do his jersey. Yeah, and, and we gonna, and we going to get there the day before earlier so we can all play Boo Ray. <laughs> They don't know how good of a Blue Ray player you is, man. They, and you won a lot of players' money. And you didn't give no cop outs. You didn't give no cop outs. You wanted everything up front. So, hey, but you good, brother. We going to do it, man. I'm going to do it. I'm looking forward to doing it. And trust and believe when they see this, I'm guaranteed that it's going to get put in the making. So we going we gonna, to we gonna finish it out like this. We're going to do it like Perk would say. On my mama. Oh my mama. <laughs> we can't get the last part, but we can get the oh my mama, all right?